I remember that day, I was commuting home when I received a call from a state police shift commander. A badly decomposed human body had been found inside the North Attleboro Industrial Park. It was a secluded area owned by a local construction company. So it was a jogger that was jogging through the industrial park. He had found a body. He had called it in. When I arrived there, I observed a, a black male on his back, with his left arm over his chest area. He had been shot several times in the upper torso area. There was a Red Sox hat a couple feet from his head area. There were several spent shell casings that were in close proximity to his body. We preserved the deceased's body with the top as well as a canopy. I secured the five shell casings as well as the blunt and footwear impressions that did not match the footwear of the deceased. The victim's body was searched. He had his wallet, there was some uh, small amount of cash in his pocket. There was a cell phone. The dead man is Odin Lloyd, a semi-pro football player from South Boston. He was only 27 years old. The fact that the victim's pockets were undisturbed led investigators to believe that robbery was not the motive for the crime. It seemed like an execution-style murder. There were two keys, both to a 2013 Chevrolet Suburban owned by Enterprise Rent-A-Car in the victim's front pocket. But there were no cars located at the crime scene. So our concern was to identify the person that rented that vehicle as soon as possible and determine whether or not it was connected to this crime. Investigators reach out to a representative at the rental company. I asked him if he would be willing to provide me with the name of the individual who rented the Suburban. And he pulled it up in his system and stated, oh, no. It was Aaron Hernandez of the New England Patriots. Aaron tells police he rented the SUV a week earlier, but doesn't have it and doesn't know where it is. He indicated he was letting his friend O uh, use the vehicle. We asked who O was. He said, my friend Odin. The investigators then asked when the last time Aaron Hernandez saw Odin was. And Aaron Hernandez indicated that he saw Odin up his way, meaning the Boston area, on Sunday the 16th. He was, at first, very polite and cordial. And then when we began asking other questions pertaining to the car and Odin, he flips the switch. It went from polite and courteous to argumentative. He never inquired about why we're there. He just said, I, I don't know what's up with all these questions. I'm going to contact my lawyer. He then went into the house, slammed the door shut, locked it. Odin was just that kind of guy in the neighborhood that people knew for all the right reasons, not the wrong ones. He was a very confident person very loving, very caring. Just a few hours after Odin's body is found, police discover the black SUV Hernandez says he loaned him, parked on Odin's street. Odin's sister, Shaquilla, might have a crucial piece of information. She indicated that at approximately 2.30 in the morning on Monday, she observed her brother exit the residence and enter a silver Nissan Altima he was picked up by uh, three other individuals in the car. And that the vehicle then quickly left the scene. Shaquilla didn't recognize the car or who was in it. Half an hour later, though, she starts getting some odd texts from her brother. He had texted to her NFL, and she elaborated to the detectives that were with her as far as who that particular person was. It was Aaron Hernandez. Investigators traveled to the Enterprise Rent-A-Car in North Attleboro and spoke to the manager there. The manager indicated that Aaron Hernandez had returned a silver Nissan Altima at approximately 5.30 p.m. on Monday, June 17th. This Nissan Altima matched the description of the vehicle that Shaquille had seen her brother entering on the early morning of Monday, uh, June 17th. From that moment, things started to dial up. The investigative team obtained a search warrant for Aaron Hernandez's home. 
When we found out about Aaron getting tied to Odin's death, it was hard to kind of grasp because you're like, how is this even possible, right? During their search of Aaron's house, investigators seized his video surveillance hard drive. The surveillance footage was invaluable in the investigation. It helped establish a time frame of events. It showed Aaron Hernandez and two additional people leaving Aaron Hernandez's residence very early on a Monday morning in the Nissan Altima. There was a home that had video surveillance of the car arriving and picking up Odin. The operator of that vehicle was wearing a light-colored shirt, which was consistent with what Aaron Hernandez was wearing, as proven by his own home surveillance video. Odin Lloyd's last text message from his phone was to his sister at approximately 3.23 AM. The surveillance obtained from establishments in the North Attleboro Industrial Park showed that the Nissan Altima entered the crime scene at exactly that time. The crime occurred very quickly in less than four minutes because at 3.27 AM, the Nissan was captured on surveillance video exiting the crime scene and heading in the direction of Aaron Hernandez's residence. And then the vehicle in question arrives at his home moments later. Odin didn't return with the vehicle. It also showed Aaron what appeared to be a firearm. You know, the saying, a picture's worth a thousand words. He was either a witness who had an awful lot of knowledge of what happened, or he was the trigger man. The story of the football hero turned murder suspect leads the news. All that publicity generates tips, including one from the manager at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. She stated that after Aaron Hernandez had returned the Nissan Altima, she began to clean the car out and found a piece of blue bubble gum and what she referred to as a bullet. She cleaned out the car and discarded those items in the dumpster. Investigators dive into that dumpster. The fact that we were able to recover the shell casing from the dumpster at Enterprise before it was removed to a landfill is a tremendous blessing. That shell casing matched the shell casings from the five that was recovered at the crime scene where Odin Lloyd was found. With the murder weapon missing, detectives turned to the shoe print found near Odin's body, wondering if it will match the sneakers Hernandez was wearing the night his friend was murdered. So we looked for the footwear, but those sneakers were not there. They had vanished. The next day, Detectives get a break. The investigation received a tip that Aaron Hernandez had stopped at the Blue Hills Express gas station on the early morning of June 17th, just after 2 o'clock, en route to pick up Odin Lloyd at his residence. Again, the video tells a story. Hernandez buys a black and mild cigar and some cotton candy bubble yum gum. The items are important in the investigation because a piece of suspected cotton candy bubble yum bubble gum was found under the driver's seat of the Nissan Altima. And a black and mild marijuana cigar was located in close proximity to Odin Lloyd's body. We learned that it was Aaron Hernandez who had arranged to meet with Odin Lloyd on the night of Sunday. June 16th into the early morning of Monday, June 17th, indicating that he wanted to get something from him and socialize. At the same time, Aaron Hernandez was contacting Ernest Wallace and Carlos Ortiz, trying to bring them up to Massachusetts as quickly as possible. Aaron Hernandez was the individual who brought all four of those people together on that night. It's pretty difficult to argue that anyone other than Aaron Hernandez premeditated this crime. Nine days after Odin was killed, police returned to Aaron's house with an arrest warrant in hand. When we went to arrest Aaron Hernandez, it seemed like the entire national media had assembled across the street from his residence. We knocked on the door. He came to the front door. 
I advised that we had a warrant for his arrest and immediately handcuffed him. I recognized that Aaron Hernandez was wearing Nike Air Jordan Retro 11 Lowe's on the night of the murder. These shoes are distinctive because they have a uh, portion of the upper is wrapped in patent leather. Sergeant Stephen Bennett conducted a reanalysis of the footwear impressions at the scene and was able to determine that the footwear impression left at the scene was consistent with a size 13 Nike Air Jordan Retro 11 low. The DNA on the blunt that was next to Odin, that was his DNA. His DNA was found on the shell casings, which were tied to bullets that murdered uh, Odin Lloyd. The sneaker imprint, that was only Aaron's and nobody else's. Surveillance video may have been the most critical part of the case. There was a lot of video that we watched, and it helped us kind of piece everything together. And as depicted by his own surveillance video, you see Aaron Hernandez in possession of a firearm in the house. That weapon was consistent with that of a Glock firearm, which was used to kill Odin Lloyd. The defense kept saying it was an iPad, or it was his phone, yeah. um, but it was not an iPad. It was definitely a gun. Prosecutors never found the gun that killed Odin Lloyd. Guilty of murder in the first degree. The fact that he was driving, that did it for me. And when you take all the other evidence that, that we saw, it all came down to Aaron. Aaron is convicted of first degree murder, which carries a mandatory sentence of life in prison. He's also found guilty of unlawful possession of a firearm and ammunition. I got a call from somebody and said, hey, you know, told me that Aaron Hernandez had taken his own life. I, I was shocked. A tragic end to a very tragic case.